I once served Baby Spice rosé at a nightclub in London. Hi, I'm Wine Dine Caroline, and you're watching Learn Wine with Caroline. If you like my real talk wine tips, make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it wherever you like to share things. Today I'm going to teach you about rosé and how it's made. I've also put together a rosé wine guide for you, which you can download with the link in the description. Do you love rosé? Write pink in the comments to let me know. Rosé is the yummiest. It's easy to drink, fruity and fresh. It just feels festive because it's pink, right? I love pink. Tell me there's something better than drinking cold rosé on a French terrace overlooking a river on a hot day. You can't because there's nothing better. Okay, maybe being on a boat. Maybe being on a boat. Um, besides being fabulous, rosé is also really interesting. It's made all over the world and comes in many shapes and sizes. Speaking of sizes, I once served Baby Spice rosé at a nightclub in London. She's teeny teeny tiny and the bottle I was pouring from was a double magnum. That was a weird night. I'm glad I'm not in my 20s anymore, but she was super nice. So what's the deal with pink wine? First, let's get a major misconception out of the way. Most rosé is not sweet. It doesn't have any residual sugar. If you're curious about sugar, make sure to watch my video on dry wine. Some rosés are sweet and that's fine, but most are not. If you like sweet rosé, make sure to go for the white Zinfandel. Otherwise, you'll find most rosés to be dry and refreshing. In general, the darker the rosé, the richer and more flavorful it will be, and the paler ones are more delicate and floral. Both are awesome. Rosé can be made from any red grape, but the most common is Grenache or Garnacha, blended with other local grapes. You see a lot of this in the south of France and all over Spain. You also see a lot of Pinot Noir rosés, some beautiful Cabernet Franc rosés from the Loire, plenty of Rosato made from local grapes all over Italy. There's rosé everywhere. So. There are four methods of making rosé. The first method is just directly pressing red grapes. This is gonna give you the palest rosé, barely any color at all. Wines made like this can be called vin gris or gray wine. The second method is skin contact maceration. This is where they crush red grapes and let the gunk and the juice sit together. The juice pulls color out of the skins and once the winemaker has the color they want from between a couple hours to a couple days, they'll separate the juice from the solids and go from there. They use both of these methods in Provence in the south of France, which is the OG home of fancy rosé. A third method is the bleeding method, or saigné in French. This is where winemakers making a red wine will siphon off a tank or two of juice at the beginning of that maceration in order to concentrate the red. This is basically a byproduct of the red wine, but they can be really great. Finally, we have blending, yes? That's right, blending white wine with a drop of red will give you rosé. This isn't very common around the world, but it is how the vast majority of pink champagne is made. So that's it. If you love rosé, make sure to download my rosé wine guide through the link in the description. And remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. Cheers.